Hey everyone, Adam here. Hope you're doing really well. I'm just in the middle of mixing a pop rock song that's got a really prominent bass guitar. And I want to do a quick video just to show you how I've got this bass guitar that really cuts through the mix. It's very mid-range focused. And in order to do that, I'm utilizing some brand new Kemper profiles that I've made available through my website. They're on sale at adam-fiasco.com, so you can use them all for yourself. But I thought it'd be pretty cool to show you how I'm actually treating these profiles and what I'm actually doing with them in the mix once they're recorded. So let's go have a look. <laughs> profile I've used for the main tone of the bass guitar. So it's the Ashdown ABM 600 amp, sounds absolutely gorgeous, um, with a U87. So this is very, very clean. The U87 picks up a really, really nice um, full range sound. So it's got really nice lows, it's got strong mids, and it picks up some uh, nice top end as well. However, what I've then done is I've taken a DI at the same time, and I've run the DI through this profile here. Now this profile is of the same amp, the ABM 600, but it's a Shure SM57 mic that was on the tweeter of the cab. This particular bass cab had a had a tweeter and this picks up a really prominent mid-range. So that's three bass guitar tracks that I've got on, uh, on, on this song. So there's the U87, mic there's then this 57 mic that's on the tweeter that's got a load of mid-range and then there's also the di as well so let's go have a look at what we're doing with those in the mix Okay, so here are the three bass tracks in the session, and we'll start with the bass amp U87, because as I said before, this is the one that's providing the main tone of the bass. So the first plugins I've got are these ones here by Slate Digital, starting off with a virtual channel, this is just emulating a SSL 4K E console, and then we're going into a Neve 1073 EQ, and this is where some of that mid-range goodness is happening so we've got 3.2k cranked and i've also got some 1.6k boosted a little bit as well got nothing on the top and nothing on the bottom the bottom's already nice and full so i just want to leave that alone now after those plugins and then going into this pull tech eq over here the top one and as you can see, there is no EQ added. Everything is flat. All that's doing is just adding some nice saturation. Um, so not, not doing much at all, really. It's just adding some nice thickness, some nice tube saturation to the uh, to the sound. And then finally, going into this plugin here, which is an LA-2A plugin by Black Rooster. I do have an LA-2A over here, but unfortunately that's taken up by the lead vocal. So. Um, I'm using an LA-2A plugin for that. So that's the U87. That sounds really, really nice and mid-rangey. It's still got a nice, thick, full bottom end, and then the compressor's just keeping everything in check. The 57 mic, so this is where a lot of the mid-range is captured. So the first thing I've done is use a dynamic EQ from FabFilter. There's some honkiness going on and some sort of boominess around sort of like 100, 150 hurts just sticking out too much so i've put a dynamic eq just to duck some of that sort of like muddiness away then going into the slate virtual channel again this just adds a little bit of saturation just like you get from a from a console i'm then going into this plugin here which is a pull tech plugin but it's the mid-range Pull tech. These ones here are the EQP ones, which is sort of like the full range. This is the mid range, and I'm adding a ton of 3K. So you can see this here; it's all the way up at 3K. 
I'm then adding a little bit of 1K as well down here, just a, just a touch of that. The final thing I'm then doing is I'm then sending it out via external FX, and I'm going into this preamp here, the Orange Warm Audio Tone Beast. Now this is set on the lining, and I've got it set to the first amp. So there's two amps to choose from just here. This one here is a really coloured one. It's very similar to like what you get from an API. The other one is very, very clean. Don't want that, I want it dirty. Um, I've then got the tone in, which uh, just adds some extra just add some extra tone and then you can actually choose what transformer you want on this preamp you can either choose a nickel or a steel and i've got it set to steel what the steel one does is it tends to roll off the bottom end and the and the top end whereas the nickel one is much flatter and that's good because it means it's going to accentuate the mid-range even more i then got the gain set quite high so it's it's redlining i'm driving it into distortion i want i want it to distort and get really really crunchy after the Tone Beast, it's then going into this compressor at the bottom here, the Warm Audio 1176. And uh, this is just compressing it somewhere around 5 to 7 dB. I've got the attack around 3 o'clock, the release around 2 o'clock. So the attack's quite fast. The release is somewhere in the middle and it just keeps everything really, really nicely in check. The final part of the equation then is the DI track and the DI track is all in this plug-in here. So again, I've got the virtual channel from Slate, just adding some subtle saturation. And then we've got this EQ here. So I'm rolling off a lot of 10K because from DIs, you do tend to get some sort of like fizziness in, in the top end. So I'm rolling all of that off. I'm adding a big chunk of 2K, another big chunk of 800 and another big chunk of 100. And then you can see I've got the high pass and the low pass engaged as well. So I'm rolling off um, some of the lows and I'm also rolling off some of the highs as well. Again, just to keep that bass focused on the mid range. And they're going, then going into this saturation box, which is doing something very similar to what I did with the Tone Beast. It's just emulating a preamp and just driving it into a bit of distortion. And then finally into this compressor here. So the compressor is always the last thing in the chain for me, um, just to kind of pin everything down and just hold it, hold it in place. And that's it. That's how I've got, that's how I'm treating the bass in this particular song. So all of the bottom end is coming from that U87 track. And then the mid range is coming from the combination of that 57 mic and the bass DI. All of these bass sounds these bass profiles are available for you to use too as kemper profiles all you need to do is head over to my website adam-fiasco.com click on the tab that says kemper profiles and you will have access to all of these sounds including the u87 including the 57 i've also profiled the bass amp on a drive setting as well so if you want a distorted really dirty bass sound you can get that too also, if you are a Slate VMS user and you own the Slate virtual microphone system, I profiled all of the amps that are available through my website using the Slate ML1 and ML2 microphones through the Slate VRS8 interface. So what that means is you can use those profiles on your Kemper and then choose the microphone and preamp that you want to use yourself in your DAW of choice. So this really gives you a ridiculous amount of choice and options for getting different tones from these profiles because you can sit and you can flick through all of the different microphones and the different preamps that you have from the Slate range. I hope that video has been useful for you, even if you don't own a Kemper. I hope you've managed to get some, uh, get some tips and tricks for processing bass guitar in a pop rock mix. If you want to grab the Kemper profiles for yourself, head over to my website, adam-fiasco.com forward slash Kemper profiles. And if you want 50% off, sign up to my mailing list and you will get a 50% off coupon emailed directly to you. See you soon.